Folks, in this video, we're going to be talking about the relative strength index, also known as the relative strength indicator, but I'm probably going to refer to it for the most part as RSI. By far, the RSI is at the top of the list in terms of utilization by most traders who perform technical analysis on whatever they may be trading. The problem is, is that when I read these books, and many of them are old now, when I read these books, the way it was offered that you should use technical analysis back then when the books were written is outdated. And I see many videos on YouTube and many of which have over 300,000 views and they're still citing the way to use the RSI is the same today as it was when the books were written back in the 1970s, 1980s and nothing could be further from the truth. So in this video, what we're going to cover is what is the RSI? Then we're going to do some RSI myth busting. Now, before we go into what is the relative strength indicator or the RSI, I'd like to share with you a quick story about me. I've been trading stocks, options, and commodities for over 25 years now. And after the dot-com bust in March of 2000, I was looking for a new strategy to help me outperform the market, but in a way that would reduce my risk and provide me a lot of upside potential. And that is when I fell in love with the RSI. I use it every single day and on every single chart, whether it be daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, intraday charts, it doesn't matter. And what I was able to do was to modify the RSI. And I'm gonna show you that later on in this video. And the modification allowed me to be far more disciplined in my approach to accumulating a stock that met certain criteria, but the first and primary criteria was that RSI had to be at a certain level. And I'll go th into this in greater detail later on in the video because it's my fifth and final strategy called the contrarian trading strategy. So please stick around and we'll go over some charts. Now, before we move on, I would ask you to please leave me a comment. Are you using RSI? And if so, how are you doing with it? And if you'd like me to do more videos, if you get value out of this one, what would you like me to do a video on? So let's move forward. Let's get to what is the relative strength indicator. Now, many of you have probably seen this calculation, your eyes glazed over, and I don't blame you. I'll be honest with you, in the 25 years that I've been using the relative strength indicator, I've never once worried about the formula behind it. So let's get rid of that and let's focus on actionable information that can help guide you. And I think it's important that we pay credit to J. Wells Wilder Jr., who was a mathematician, and he's the one that developed the relative strength index. And that was back in 1978, when it was published in New Concepts in Technical Trading Systems and in Commodities Magazine. Now, 1978 is not all that long ago for many of us. I was a child. But many of you may not have even been born back then. And what J. Wells Wilder was able to do was he was able to measure or provide the secret sauce of how to measure when a stock is moving up, the average gain should be larger than the average loss. When the stock is going down, the average gain is smaller than the average loss. It's pretty simple, but he was able to develop the RSI and allow us to visualize, generally speaking, the rate of change of a security's price. Now, the RSI is a leading momentum indicator. Now, there are other leading momentum indicators such as the stochastics, but many of you are probably familiar with lagging indicators such as the moving averages or the MACD, as well as the ADX indicator. The value that I get out of the RSI is that there's a saying that I always like to use to members and to viewers is that the market sends you signals. And this is what I'm going to show you in this commentary. And many times the signal that is provided to us by the markets is illustrated by the relative strength indicator, which again is a forward-looking momentum indicator. Now, one of the common questions that I'm asked with regard to the RSI is, what can RSI track the momentum of? Folks, It's if, if you could chart it, you can use RSI, whether it be stocks or commodities, Forex or cryptocurrencies. 
I don't care if it's cupcakes. If you could get it on the chart, you're able to use RSI. So it really is a must-have in your toolbox or an arrow in your quiver when you're doing technical analysis. Now what I want to do, folks, is I want to segue over into myth busting. And there are three key myths that I want to dismiss to help you become a more powerful trader by being better advised on how to use the RSI in the 21st century. The first myth up is 70 equals overbought, 30 equals oversold. Folks, this is very outdated information that I've seen written in Technical Analysis for Dummies, Getting Started in Technical Analysis by Jack Schwager, which is a very good book, but unfortunately, it's a little bit out of date. Now, I'll take this blurb out of Getting Started in Stock Analysis by Michael C. Tom Sepp. And for the most part, this is what all of these books define as being overbought and oversold. And unfortunately, it's being repeated to this day by many on YouTube where many people get their information from. But unfortunately, this information is outdated. And I'm going to show you in a moment on the charts what I mean. And this passage is from Getting Started in Technical Analysis. The RSI is a fairly straightforward oscillator and easy to track. Very true to this day. It is based on an index value between 0 and 100, which a normal mid-range would be above 30 and below 70. If the oscillator reaches or moves above 70 on the top side, the stock is overbought. If it reaches or moves below 30, the stock is oversold. Neither of these conditions should be expected to last for very long. Folks, this is where we need to amend the rules on how to use RSI so that we're using RSI more effectively into the 21st century. Now, the first chart we're going to use to illustrate why using 30 as oversold is dangerous. We'll be using the chart of Best Inc., ticker symbol BEST. And you can see here that on September 14th of 2020, the RSI, as noted in blue, went below the 30 mark. And if you would have went into this trade expecting that the share price would have, you may have lose quite a bit of money if you were stopped out. Why is that? Because while RSI went down below 30 here on September the 14th, it truly didn't bottom out until September the 21st. And if you would have bought at the lows on the 14th at $3.35 and sold at the highs when RSI ultimately bottomed out on the 21st, you would have still had a net loss. And those prices I just gave you are best case scenarios. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a point in time where 30 being oversold and 70 being overbought were accurate. When I first started using RSI, that was the case. However, with the advent of computerized trading, algorithms, high-frequency trading, that is no longer the case, and we need to modify our behavior in how we use the RSI. Another example, this time we'll go to RSI overbought. We'll bring up BMI, which is Badger Meter. This is a daily chart, and you can see that back here on October the 3rd, RSI went above 70. That was right here. However, the share price would have kept going higher. Now, what if you use the simple rule of thumb of overbought, over 70, and you sold your position? Or you went short, you would have lost out on a lot of upside potential because the ultimate high, after hitting a high on the 8th, which was a high of 69.99, was up here. At $82.90, you would have left a lot of money on the table, or if you were short, you would have been sitting with a very large loss. Now, these are only two examples, but I would strongly encourage you that moving forward, that you look at the charts that you're looking to trade and see whether or not in the past on those charts, whether or not the examples I've just shown you are more common. And I guarantee you, if you remember what I'm showing you right now, you're going to say, wow, I can't believe how outdated the oversold, overbought rule of thumb that my grandfather taught me is out of date. So the myth of 30 being oversold and a buy signal and 70 meaning a sell signal and overbought, that myth is busted. Now you may be asking, well, Bob, how do you 
use the RSI in your trading? Well, I'll show you. Now, what I do is this. Length is periods, whether it be days, weeks, months. It's, it's, it's 14 periods consecutively. Now, at current, pretty much all charting softwares default to upper band 70 and lower band 30, which is how it was intended initially, and that's fine. But what I like to do, and this is what gives me the edge, is I take this number and I change it to 80. And I change the lower number to 20. These are your settings for the 21st century. Apply. Now take a look at this very same chart. Badger meter, sim symbol BMI, same chart as before. Take a look at this chart, and you can see that if you were using my settings, that it became overbought the day that it began to top out. Now, this in and of itself does not mean that you're going to see the shares roll over. It just implies that you should be watching it very close. If you're long, set a trailing stop loss order, perhaps take some money off the table because this is unsustainable. Now, don't get me wrong. RSI I've seen go up to 95 and in rare cases even higher than that. But it's at this point here where you need to be saying to yourself, my upside is limited and my risk of losing money where to enter the trade has grown, therefore I should avoid. If you own a stock, you should be looking to scale out. So myth number one here, I think that we've busted. Now moving on to myth number two. And myth number two is changing the formula will give me an edge over other traders. And this was brought to my attention by somebody that made a video on YouTube and it has over 250,000 views and it's downright scary. Now, what he did in the video was that he modified the length. He kept upper at 70 and lower at 30. So we're back to the original settings, the default settings. But what he did was he modified the length to this. I'm gonna add another RSI indicator and we'll use this line in purple to illustrate what he did. He changed the length to 250. He kept the upper at 70, lower at 30, applied. Now, let's put this to practical use. We're gonna bring up a chart of AMZN, which I shorted just prior to the stock market crash during COVID. Now, back on February the 11th, Amazon.com hit an all-time high of 21.85 per share. RSI continued to rise, validating the price action. Now, what I did back then is I took my crayon out and I watched for a lower high because we knew there was a shock coming to the supply chain. And what I did was I used my 14-day RSI with upper 80, lower 20, and I was looking for a lower high on price and a lower high on the RSI. And that lower high arrived here on February the 19th. This is how I use RSI. Remember... RSI is a momentum indicator, and it was clearly showing on this chart that we were losing momentum. We were putting in lower highs, even though we had put in a new all-time high on February the 19th. What did RSI do using my settings, 14-day, 80, 20? It put in the lower high. It failed to validate. The market sent you a signal that Amazon was losing momentum. And then once it broke down below RSI 74 spot 51, you knew that you had your lower high and now a lower low. But price didn't break down to a new lower low until several days later on February the 21st. This is the value of using a 14-day length on your time frame. Now, if you're using a time frame of, again, 250 periods, in this case, a daily chart, so... 250 days with out-of-the-box settings of upper band 70 is overbought, lower band 30. Let's take a look at how this would have helped you. While this version of my RSI sent you a signal on the 19th of February that there was trouble with Amazon, the 250 period view didn't show that there was trouble with Amazon until it began to decline a couple of days later on or about the 21st. And it did so very calmly and did not give you a sense of urgency that there was something very, very wrong with Amazon, unlike the 14-day time frame. So I would strongly encourage you,
please use the 14 day time frame. The value of the RSI is that technical analysts out there use this indicator and you're going to have traders of like mind using that time frame, meaning on a 14 day or 14 week or 14 month basis, nobody's using 250 periods, not enough to make a difference anyway. And we were able to short Amazon in advance of the rapid sell-off that we saw in the subsequent months. So changing the formula will give me an edge over other traders. That myth is busted. Myth number three, when RSI is moving lower, I need to sell my stock or look to short a stock. Let's talk about that. We're going to use Badger Meter again, symbol BMI. And let's take a look at what happened after September the 18th, 2020, when it rallied, RSI hit a new high. But then all of a sudden, on the 21st, it pulled back, so did RSI. It then rallied, put in a higher low, and then broke down yet again to put in a new lower low. The key is, is that you need to keep in mind what the stock is doing on a longer-term time frame, weekly time frame. It was in an uptrend, and the trend remained healthy. So you had the probabilities at your back that what we were doing on this pullback was that we were entering a consolidation range. And that was evidenced with this divergence on price versus RSI. This is why you need to use price and RSI. I want to talk about this more in a moment. In conjunction with each other, RSI should never be treated as a standalone reason to buy or sell a stock. Because take a look at what would have happened if you would have relied solely on RSI. So we peaked out here, lower high here. Then what we did is we broke down to a new lower low on the 28th. Wow, if you were just looking at the RSI, you're saying, I need to short this stock or I need to get out. But what was price telling you? Sometimes you get false negatives. This is accurate. The 18th through the 21st, price pulled back, RSI pulled back. And then when you fast forward to the 23rd of September, the RSI broke down to a new lower low. Certainly, certainly I needed to short this stock. Certainly I needed to sell this stock. But no. Why? Because price was not validating what RSI was telling you. It did not put in a new lower low. And in fact, the next day, it bounced off of a support and RSI recovered to press on higher. And then again, right here on the 28th, you saw RSI pull back. But what did it do? What did price do? It went into a consolidation. And then ultimately, it broke out. So just make sure that if you're going to sell or short a stock based upon lower highs and lower lows on the RSI, that you're getting validation on price. And I would only be opening up a short position. There is a caveat to that, and I'll go to it in the final trading strategy on this video, so stick around. But I would only open a short position when RSI is putting in lower highs, lower lows, and it's down below 50. Why? It's because when it's down below 50, rallies tend to fade, meaning if you get a rally higher, the day following when RSI closes down below 50 and it is in decline, that rally has a strong probability of fading. More on that later. Now let's talk about spotting divergences using RSI. Now we've covered strategy number one, which is overbought and oversold. And in that we discussed the caution about reacting to a declining RSI because it may just be entering a consolidation phase. But in this strategy, strategy number two, I want to talk about spotting divergences because all too often people approach RSI from the perspective of overbought, oversold, and nothing could be further from the truth. Now, for this example, I'm going to talk about XAR, the S&P 500 Aerospace and Defense Spider. Now, you could see that the share price had bottomed out here on September the 24th, 2020, and then RSI validated the breakout by moving up in conjunction with the price. Good stuff. And as I pointed out earlier, the share price went into a consolidation and you saw a pullback on RSI, which is fine. What you want to make sure that you're seeing are higher lows. It's a momentum indicator. So the trend is still intact. Now, 
using RSI to give you an edge over other traders by spotting divergences would have helped you out right here on October the 1st when the share price hit the upper band of resistance and it pulled back. No breakout on price. However, RSI did break out. This is an indicator leading price performance. And then the following day, you had a buy signal with this outside reversal bar or a bullish engulfing of the prior day's move. It's on this breakout that you could have bought the shares and they would have continued higher. So in this case here, you saw a bullish divergence on the RSI. Okay, so now let's talk about how we spot a bearish divergence using RSI, again, in conjunction with share price. Now, I was a part of this trade where I had a book profits on the GDXJ, which is a gold mining ETF symbol GDXJ. Now, the GDXJ put in a high on RSI July the 22nd. It consolidated sideways, then the share price broke out. And while RSI did move up higher, it failed to confirm the higher high versus the 22nd. Now, that's no reason to sell. However, it's reason to keep a close eye on whatever you're trading. The share price then dropped back down into what appeared to be a consolidation range. RSI confirmed. Where things get tricky is right here. We're going to remove this line where we broke out on August the 4th, continuation move higher to new multi-year highs on the GDXJ. The only problem is, is that when you take a look at the RSI to give you a pulse check on how momentum is, all you need to do is take your crayon out and do this. It was failing to validate. We were putting in lower highs, despite the fact that price was moving out to new higher highs. And not only that, what was worse was that we broke down to a new lower low here on the 29th that was over a week before ultimately the price of the gdxj broke down below support levels and went into a brief shallow correction so this is an example of a bearish divergence on the gdxj would i have gone short based upon this probably not however I would have avoided opening up a new position or adding to my existing position. And what I did do on this observation was that we began booking some profits. This is how you leverage identifying RSI to spot bullish and bearish divergences. Now, strategy number three is the candlestick strategy, meaning we're using RSI in conjunction with the candlesticks. And if you'd like to see me do more videos on candlestick charting or RSI, the stochastics, or any other indicator or topic that you might enjoy, please leave a comment below, and I'll definitely get back to you, especially if you have a question with regard to what I'm talking about right now. Now, the candlestick strategy, we're going to use the DBA, is a very powerful way to identify when a stock that has especially been in a long-term bull or bear market is tired and a reversal and a change in trend is imminent so let's talk about how we do this now in this analysis we're going to use a little bit of what i already taught you as well we're going to incorporate it, spotting divergences into candlestick charting it all ties together and this is this is at the root of how i trade now the dba you can go back on youtube i've been talking about the dba for months now and it's been in a long-term bear market this is a monthly chart so a lot of data here. It's been in a multi-year bear market. And we put in an ultimate low on the DBA here the month of June of 2020. But the candlesticks were telling you for the past prior months, going back to March, April, May, that you were seeing bottoming action. These wicks, shadows, bottoming tails. Call them cupcakes. I don't care what you call them. Cupcakes again. I know, it's a thing I have. So we saw bottoming action at the $18.17 mark. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting to me. You know what that tells me to do? Are we seeing anything interesting on our indicators? Because the stock had stopped going down. Now, while we hadn't broken out yet, you had begun to see RSI begin to drift up. And what we're looking for here, because I'm still watching it to buy, what we're looking for here is an ultimate breakout 
So these candlesticks here mark indecision in the DBA. And when you see indecision, as noted by this doji star formation, or as I mentioned earlier, these bottoming tails, that's an indicator that the trend might reverse. And after observing the price action on the candlesticks, we want to take note of what is RSI doing. And RSI was drifting up despite the fact that we hadn't yet broken out above resistance. See how RSI drifted up here? And then ultimately we broke out in August, confirmed by RSI. And while we're still seeing reluctance on the part of the DBA to break out to new higher highs, RSI is breaking out. This is an indicator leading price performance. Now there are no guarantees. Me personally, I would wait for the breakout on price, but this is a very bullish indicator and this should be on your watch list as one to watch for that breakout. And what I like to do, this is TrendSpider. I like to set alerts on TrendSpider. This is my primary software for technical analysis. In fact, there's a 35% discount code below. If you watch this on YouTube, the video description area, 35% off. Or if you watch this on the website, it's within the blog post immediately below. And it's also included with our silver and gold level memberships. But you must use the link below and the discount code CON35 to get that discount. Now, using TrendSpider to set up our alert, I want to know when the DBA breaks out, again, above this resistance level. A note to myself, RSI bullish divergence, long entry point. And we're going to keep this active for a couple of weeks. And all I care about is when we break through and close above monthly resistance. And my alert is set. And at the contrarian trader, we take a rules-based approach, meaning I don't care what the price of DBA does between now and breakout point, unless, of course, it reaches and pulls back to the lower band of support. So what I'll do here is set up another alert at the lower band of support. We'll keep a little bit of sensitivity on. Now, here's our alert. I want to know when the DBA touches or bounces off of the support level at $13.97, give or take a dime. The key is, though, as noted by my note to self, is that RSI must confirm and hold the breakout point right here in white. It's okay to pull back, test, and hold on a pullback to support. But ideally, we do not break down below this support level. If it does, I would avoid the trade. Create alert. So again, this is our rules-based approach using automated technical analysis as provided by TrendSpider. And until one of these alerts are fired off, we set it and forget it. That's how you take the impulse buying or selling out of your trading and you become a very, very powerful trader. Now, the fourth strategy I want to go over is the Bollinger Band strategy. This is a more advanced strategy, and I wouldn't suggest it for those who are beginners. I would strongly encourage you, if you're a beginner, Rewatch strategy number one, which is the overbought oversold module. Strategy number two, which is the spotting divergences module. And strategy number three, which is the candlestick module. Now, if you're an experienced trader and you're looking to develop new strategies for trading using both the RSI and the Bollinger Bands, well, this is for you. Now, this is ideally suited for short-term swing trades or day trading and what you're doing with this strategy is that you're combining the power of the bollinger bands with the rsi now keep in mind that your out of the box bollinger bands are two standard deviations do not use the two standard deviation what i use are the three standard deviation up and three standard deviation down and when you combine a stock that is trading above its three standard deviation Bollinger Band, along with a stock that is trading above on RSI, above my settings of not 70 upper, but 80 upper, you're dealing with a stock that is at unsustainable price points and that a pullback is imminent. Does that mean the stock can't go higher? Of course not. Yes, it can go higher. It's a very powerful stock. But you want to also incorporate in this your candlestick charts to identify topping action. We're not there yet. We're close. And the symbol that we're going to use is CBIO, Catalyst Bio. And you can see here that we have RSI greater than 80. 
it can go higher. The however here is that we are trading and closed significantly above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Folks that are watching this in the future, I can predict to you that this is not going to end well. Go back, fact check me to make sure I'm right. I have no idea. I'll scroll this over. There's no data looking forward. That's how confident I am that while, yes, we may move a bit higher here, that ultimately we are going to correct. Is it going to crash? No, it's not going to crash. But you are going to get an opportunity to scalp a swing trade to the short side. This is why I say that this is a more advanced strategy for those very experienced with trading. And if you'd like me to do videos on the Bollinger Bands or on the Bollinger Band strategy, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like feedback on and I'll be more than happy to provide it. I work for you. You guide me. And believe me, I enjoy the heck out of it. So thank you in advance. Now to give you an example of what I mean by this is not going to end well, look at the last time that CBIO had been at nosebleed levels as it is right now. Back in December of 2019, it pierced and closed above its third standard deviation Bollinger Band, hitting a high of $7.95. RSI on that date hit a high of roughly 80. Not quite as overbought as we are at the time of this recording. However, it's, it's, it's good enough to illustrate what happens. And you can see that after hitting a high on the 18th of December at $7.95, it finally bottomed out here on January the 8th with a low of $6.38. Now think about if you were looking to buy the stock here and you were very bullish on the shares. Think about the power that you have at your disposal of being able to identify an extreme overbought level on Bollinger Bands and an RSI. If you had that at your disposal, you would have known, listen, this is not going to end well. While I may not want to short the stock, I'm definitely going to hold off until the froth comes off and I'll buy it at a better risk reward entry point. And when it hit a low, what was RSI doing? It was bottoming out and then validated the breakout higher. That's the Bollinger Band strategy. The fifth and final strategy I mentioned earlier, and it's really what inspired me to create the contrarian trader back in 2005 and we have trained thousands of members on how to learn how to use technical analysis learn how to use discipline to identify opportunities in the marketplace with reduced risk and maximized reward and the strategy i put together was the contrarian trading style and what that combined was primarily the rsi at times, the Bollinger Bands, but in all cases, candlesticks and volume and the MACD. Now, the MACD is a lagging indicator. However, it validates what I'm seeing on the leading indicator being the Bollinger Band and primarily the RSI. And as a final bonus, I'm going to leave you off with a very popular stock. And it's a stock that anyone over the age of 10 has definitely heard of but it is in an RSI bubble. And I'm going to leave you off with that. So stick around to the end. Now, the first example of an extreme overbought stock, which is what the contrarian trading style is all about, finding extreme overbought and extreme oversold stocks to trade. Because the probability of once you have RSI greater than 90, the probability of it being sustainable for the longer term is unlikely you're going to get a reaction to the downside at some point in time i can do far more in-depth detail about this trading style if you're interested please leave a comment below but i don't want to get too in-depth with it right here right now because this is a video regarding the rsi primarily but this is an advanced strategy i would strongly encourage you to not trade this style until you've watched future tutorials from me because there are a lot of nuances on how to trade extreme overbought, extreme oversold stocks using the contrarian trading strategy. Now, example number one, 10X Genomics. Now, oddly enough, I was long of this stock not too long ago, and I booked profits on or about here where we pierced the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. So we left some money on the table as the shares continued higher, but the market became shaky. And when I see a stock begin to show me a profit and the market is a bit shaky. I invoke my old trader's adage, first out, best out. And that's what we did here. But in this case, we left a little bit of money on the table. 
but we are looking to short 10x genomics based upon RSI, candlesticks, and let's bring up the MACD and volume. Now my settings here on RSI to revisit are at 14 day rolling period, upper band 80, lower band 20. Not the upper band 70, not the lower band 30, as suggested to be used by the books written many, many years ago. Remember, we're dealing with RSI now, 21st century. We need to up our game. That's why we're using these new upper bands. And I hope that in, in updated volumes of uh, getting started in technical analysis, which is a very, very good book overall, I use it to this day. I hope that they update in the next volume, overbought 280 and oversold to 20. Now here with RSI, you still have RSI validating with a move higher that the shares are very strong. The problem is, is that what we did on the last trading day, which was a Friday, is that we did break out, but we faded along with the rest of the market. And while this is becoming an interesting short, we're not there quite yet, but we're very close. Now to really drive home how out of date the 70-30 rule is, for overbought, oversold, I'm gonna adjust this. I'm gonna change 80 because I'm open-minded to the fact that, you know what, 80 may be getting a little bit older now and we need to revisit it. What about if we change this up to 90? Take a look at where RSI is right now. We are at 89 spot 89 on the last close. And not only that, we broke out the last trading day above resistance with RSI well above 70, well above 80, close to 90. This is why, again, I, I hate to keep pounding this home, but the old way, 70-30 rule, out the window. That myth is now busted. I don't want to see anyone lose money. Now, with the contrarian trading style, what we look for here is not only our prim primary indicator trading above the 80 mark, what we're looking for are signs by the market that we're beginning to see price action weaken. As you saw, this past trading day, we had broken out on that day, but faded to close well off the highs of the day. But that in and of itself is not a short signal. We are close. We're also looking at volume. Volume was very light on this particular trading day. It was an institutional distribution that may resume the next trading day. And we may see higher volume and a break of the support level. That would have me much closer to shorting the stock if that were to happen. And one of, the, one of the other indicators, which is the lagging indicator, which is the MACD, what you're seeing here are, I don't use the lines, I use the histogram, the MACD histogram. What you're seeing here is momentum, which is lagging, waning, it's declining. These are the indicators that we must see, declining up volume, RSI well over 80, and price action beginning to fade and ideally, on an intraday basis, we'll use a 30-minute chart on an intraday basis to identify whether or not we're beginning to see signals by the market that we're beginning to put in lower highs. And you can see here that we clearly are lower high. And what's RSI doing? Breaking down to lower highs. You can see how we close down below it. And now we have lower lows. So the intraday or the internals of 10X Genomics indicate that if you are long, you should be booking profits because the RSI on a daily time frame, on an intraday time frame, is sending you a signal to get out because you're probably going to see shorts lean into the shares and you're going to see some institutional profit selling in the very near term. Now, I promised you that I would leave you off with an extreme overbought stock that everyone knows, and it is a bubble. And that stock is, drum roll please, Microsoft. That's right, Microsoft is in a bubble. This is a daily chart, and I need to use stockcharts.com, which is a very good software as well. But it's fallen behind TrendSpider, which again, 35% discount code below, because TrendSpider has so many more features now than stockcharts.com. Anyway, I can get timeframes on stockcharts.com that are soon coming to TrendSpider, which I'm going to go through in a moment. So you may be saying, I don't see a bubble here, Bob. What are you talking about? The chart looks pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's it pulled back a little bit this past trading day on a Friday. But otherwise, we're close to a breakout 
on Microsoft. And I won't argue with you. However, what we do here at the Contrarian Trader is we use multi-time frame analysis. Meaning, if I'm going to buy a stock like Microsoft as a potential breakout trade, I don't care about the daily chart than many do. I care about the higher level charts. Meaning, the daily chart is a view of the battlefield from a 5,000 foot view. Whereas a weekly chart, this is your view from a 10,000 foot view of the battlefield. And you can see strong uptrend, but it's this chart that begins to tell us a story, not the daily chart. Keep an eye on the RSI. RSI peaked out on Microsoft the week of February the 10th. It sold off due to COVID, rallied back, and ultimately broke out to new all-time highs. There's a problem, though, as you fast forward to present day and you look back. Ever since February, RSI has been putting in lower highs and now lower lows, despite the fact we've been putting in all-time highs. That is a bearish divergence. We went over bearish divergences earlier, but this is not why we have a bubble. I'm not done yet. We have more. Let's move back a bit. Let's go all the way to a quarterly chart. Now we're talking about the 50,000 foot view of the battlefield. And this is where we enter bubble territory. RSI and Microsoft on a quarterly basis is at 92 spot 86. Think about it. Microsoft, a company worth over $1 trillion has an RSI of 92.86. Does this mean I'm going to short Microsoft on the next trading day? Not yet. I'm going to wait for the break. The charts, the price action, RSI, stochastics, they'll tell me when it's time. But what I'm doing is I'm using the quarterly chart and RSI as a qualifier. It gets better. Let's further validate using what I taught you earlier, the Bollinger Band strategy on a yearly time frame. Now we're talking about 100,000 foot view of the battlefield on a yearly time frame. We have RSI at 93 spot 76, all time highs, and probably one of the most overbought stocks on the universe. And when you take a look at the Bollinger Bands, the Bollinger Bands, I mentioned earlier that out of the box, you have a two standard deviation Bollinger Band. That's in green. I use a three standard deviation Bollinger Band. That's in red. We have traded for the past four years above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Folks, we're not supposed to be here. Microsoft is a bubble. So that I hope that if somebody's watching this a year, two years from now, you're looking back saying, my God, the guy was right. If you're, if you're watching this two years from now, this is October of 2020, please leave a comment saying whether or not I was right. So to summarize, we've covered what the relative strength index or indicator is. We've dispelled some myths. Those myths are 70 is overbought and 30 is oversold. We've also dispelled that changing the length of time from 14 to a different time frame does not give you an edge over other traders. If you shorten it, it becomes too noisy. If you draw it out too long, as I displayed in a 250 bar time frame, it's way too slow for you to react. So it does not give you an edge over other traders. Stick with the 14 day time frame. We've also dispelled that when you see the RSI begin to decline, that it's a sell signal. That's not accurate. It could be entering a consolidation range and that you should watch the candlesticks to see whether or not the shares are bottoming out and poised for a new breakout higher because the RSI is in fact a forward-looking momentum indicator. It generally trades along with the price. And with any oscillator, as price pulls back, so should the oscillator. As price breaks out, so should the oscillator. Strategies that we've discussed, overbought and oversold. I've shown you how to use 80 is overbought. You'll need to manually change your settings to 80 and change the lower band to 20 on your charting software. If you're using TrendSpider, it's very simple. Simply click on properties and you can change the settings in here. Again, 35% discount code below in the video description area or on the blog page. Use that link and the discount code. Spotting divergences is a very powerful way of identifying 
whether or not a stock which has been in a long-term downtrend or in a long-term uptrend may in fact begin to see signs as noted by the RSI of beginning to break down or break out prior to being reflected on the share price. Strategy number three is the candlestick strategy. And that's where we combine the power of candlestick charting along with the RSI. And you should use that on every single trade that you make without exception. The fourth and more advanced strategy, that's the Bollinger Band strategy. That's for more short-term swing trades. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want me to do more videos on indicators, trading, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like for me to do. And the fifth and final, the contrarian trading strategy is the one that I developed going on 15 years now. And it's one where we take advantage of short-term extreme overbought and or oversold levels. And in the case of Microsoft, it's not even a short-term overbought condition. It's more of a longer-term bubble where I think there's a lot more probable downside than there is upside on Microsoft going out a few months. And in closing, folks, I really appreciate you watching all the way through this video. I know it's been long, but I hope you got value out of it. And if you did, if you could help support the channel, if I could ask you to smash that like button, share it with a friend, leave a comment below. I'll definitely get back to you. And please join us every Sunday and Thursday night as we go live. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Generally, I'll take chart requests from the audience after I go through the requests that have been submitted by members. If you're a member of the Contrarian Trader, normally we only go in about an hour. But if you're a member, I'll stay on until 10 o'clock at night to go through your symbols. So we'd love for you to become a member by joining our 14-day free trial offer where you get Spider for free. And until the next video, everybody have a profitable trading day and week. Be well.